This video is going to be very different than all the videos which you usually see on SourceCAD. Now in this video, I will share my experiences after using the 3D Connection Space Mouse Pro Wireless for more than 6 months now. Now this mouse has become an indispensable part of my CAD workflow now and I've used it on at least two softwares, SOLIDWORKS and Fusion 360. And currently I'll show you this workflow of using this Space Mouse Pro wireless device on Fusion 360. So let's get started. Now to begin with, I will show you how this mouse is different from a traditional three button mouse and a combination of keyboard and how you can use it efficiently to kind of improve the way you work with your CAD software. Now you must be familiar with this device and if not, you can go to 3D Connection website, link is down below to explore more devices from them. Now this is one of the wireless versions. It also has a wired version, but I usually prefer the wireless devices and hence I got this one from 3D Connection. So here I've got these two simple parts here, which I will assemble here. And of course, this is a simplified version of a backhoe loader arm set, which I'm going to just show you how to just assemble using Fusion 360. Okay, but before we do that, let's just explore a few of the things that we see right here on this device. The very first thing that you'll notice are all of these several buttons. Now, we have the quick navigation keys right here. So if you want to go to any of the standard views, you can just press it right here. For example, this will take you to the front view here. This will take you to the right view, top view, and now this one will rotate your view by an angle of 90 degrees. Now irrespective of the view you are in. So if you are in the front view, it will rotate it by 90 degrees along the front view and so on. Now if your drawing is completely kind of out of focus, if it's big or small, you can just use this fit option to just fit it entirely in the drawing area. And then we have some keyboard short keys right here. So we have Alt, Shift, Control and all these keys right here, including Escape key. Now. These four keys are the programmable keys. So one, two, three, and four, and you can program them as per your requirement. And you can even program all of these other keys as well, but I won't recommend that. So we'll also see how we can just program these four keys. And apart from that, you can also program your own radial menu. Now radial menu is this kind of thing. It gives you an extra option, an extra set of options where you can assign different tools and commands to different sides of this radial menu. So this is a four button radial menu. You can also choose a uh, eight button made radial menu just for this. So here I'm just going to cancel this out. And now let's get to this cap. Now this cap is the main thing here which drives your part. So here it has this fluidic six degrees of freedom. And as you can see, when I'm moving my cap, it's just moving my complete set of components here. So it's as if I'm holding the part right in my hand, just moving it freely in the 3D drawing environment. So this is how it usually works. So if you just hold this cap and just move it up, it's gonna move it up, then down, front, back, left, right. Now a combination of all of these movements will just move your part the way you want in the 3D workspace. Okay. Now let's see how we can use it to assemble this part. And I'm just going to use a very simple joint and just assemble these two here. To do this, I'm gonna to go to this assemble panel and I'll select this joint. Okay, in the motion, I'll select revolute and I'll go to position and here I'm going to select between two faces. All right, let's just zoom into this part of the drawing. And as you can see, to zoom in, all I need to do is just drag it towards me and here it is, it's going to zoom in very, efficiently and here I can now select this face. This is the face which I'm gonna be selecting. Then all I need to do is just twist it and here we have the second face. Now to select the snap point, I'm just going to select it right in between these two faces. So any of these face is just fine, but look at this. When I'm selecting this face and when I'm moving my cursor back to that point, it kind of moves that snap point. So in order to keep that snap point active, I'll have to press control and hold that key. Now you can do that from keyboard or you can use the shortcut key here as well. So we have the control key here on the Space Mouse Pro Wireless as well. So I'm gonna go to this one here and now I'll press and hold my control key. 
Now I'll move my mouse and as you can see, it just keeps that snap point active. So I'll just click and there we are. So using just this device, we were able to make all these selections. Let's do the same thing for the next part. So I'll just select between two faces on the part two. And now here I'll once again orbit this drawing. So I've got the first face and the, for the first face I'm selecting this. For second face I'll select this. And once again I've got to just select that midpoint and for the midpoint let's just move it here. And as you can see once again it is highlighting the center point. Let's just go to this one and not yet highlighting the exact center that we need. Now it is. So here and I'll just press and hold my control key and I'll click here. There we are. We've got this thing selected and it exactly snapped where it should. So these two are now assembled like this. Okay, let's click OK. And here we are. We've got these two assembled properly. Okay, so that's how you can use this device to well, assemble components quite easily. Now, if you have to do the same thing using keyboard, while well, the workflow will be different and a lot more cumbersome. Let's just try assembling another component here, but this time I'm going to use completely the keyboard. So here I'll go to this one and I'll just add this hydraulic cylinder. So I'll drag it and drop it here. All right, now let's just move it slightly here and maybe a little bit towards this side. All right, and with that, I'll click OK. We can also close this data panel and maybe I'll break the link as well of this hydraulic cylinder. So continue and we are done. Okay, now in order to just well assemble it using keyboard, I'm just going to leave this now and here we are. So now we just need to first go to joint and once again, we just need to select it. So now I just need to zoom into this area, then orbit my drawing and then select the respective point. So once again, I'm just going to select between two faces. The first face, orbit it, the second face, and now the center point. So here I'll press and hold control and select it. Okay, that's selected. Now using mouse, move it back, zoom out, move to the next component and repeat the process again. Now, as you can see, I've got to go through several of these steps in order to reach the right point. But the same thing was completely intuitive when using the space mouse. Okay, so here I'll just now again repeat the same workflow. So component two, and here is the first one. Then again, the second plane, and then this point. Right, and that's assembled. So click OK, and here we are. So this is assembled now. And as you can see, we did got to this point, but it required a lot more extra effort than the usual workflow. Okay, now, you can even improve your workflow simply by adding frequently used tools on these short keys. Let me show you how to do that. And uh, I'll start with this menu. So here I have a menu key. I'm just going to press this. And once you have installed this device properly, it will show you this kind of menu where it automatically detects the software which you are using. So as you can see, it detected the software which I'm using, which is Autodesk Fusion 360. And it also detects the devices which currently I have. So this is the CAD mouse wireless, which I'm using right now. And then we have the Space Mouse Pro Wireless, that this device, and this one is also installed, but it's not connected currently. Okay, so I'm going to select this one because I want to configure this thing. And here I have two options, advanced settings and buttons. Well, we need to configure buttons, but first let's just go to advanced setting and see what we have. So as you can see here, we can just activate or deactivate any of these motions and we can even reverse their direction. Also, these are the things which are active. Now you can obviously deactivate it and also the direction of zoom, you can just make it different using these options. All right, let's close it and let's see buttons. Now this is where we'll make the changes. So here we have four of these keys. And as you can see, this key is well called test and here I've got a radial menu assigned. So in this case, let's just go to key number four and assign a radial menu here. So I'll just go to this one here and it's gonna show you all of these options where I'll select radial menu. Okay. Let's click on new radial menu and I'll give it a name. So I'll call it assembly. 
okay now you can choose between four and eight sections so here we have eight button layout and four button layout just to keep things simple I'll select four button layout now and now you can choose the command shortcut or you can also choose one of the existing commands here so you can just click this arrow and select the commands from any of these for example keyboard shortcut mouse short keys views and anything from this list here I just want to select a command shortcut so I'll just click here and I'll type J and that's the only thing I want to select now J is for joint in Fusion 360 so that's what I've assigned here and now you can also assign all the remaining commands here for example maybe let's just go to this two and I'll select macros and here you can see some of these tools for example maybe let's just select hole for this so here we are now key number two is assigned to whole command and then again maybe I'll just go to macro again and this time let's just select fillet and let's just assign one more here so macros and I'll select circle so now all of these four radial sections are assigned their respective commands and we can now close it and here key number four will start assembly radial menu from where we can select the commands you can also do it very quickly if you just have a command which you very frequently use then you can also assign it directly here so instead of just selecting the radial menu you can click here and type that command and that's also going to assign the command or you can just select that command from this list so I've got this joint here assigned and also in the assembly radial menu I've got this thing assigned so now with that I'll click close and just close it and let's try it again so if you want to apply the joints all you've got to do is just press one on this space mouse and here we are now the joint command is active here we have the joint command simply by pressing one you can activate it alternatively you can also go to this four and that's going to open the radial menu which we just now created and as you can see it has joint circle fillet and hole just go to joint and it's going to start the joint tool so that's how you can quickly assign all of these commands as well here now in this case I'm not going to just use the joint tool to assemble more of these components and instead I'll just go to an assembled part here so here I have an assembly and here let's just see what else we can do with this so I've got this assembly and now as you know you can navigate it very easily here but now if you want to get up and close with this part and want to see the details which is of course not possible using simple three button mouse or when you are navigating with keyboard it's just not possible to move right inside the components kind of like this and just see them kind of up and close like this so here if you want to see the details from your component kind of like this you can use this mouse so here we have it and you can just get inside this it's all a matter of practice there we are and we got this so this kind of fluid navigation is not available in a traditional three button mouse set and of course this will help you improve your workflow significantly no matter what cat software you're using now what's my take on this well in the beginning you may find it little overwhelming and it will take a few days to get a hang of this software but once you are completely accustomed to using this device and also the CAD mouse along with it it will become an indispensable part of your CAD workflow and this will make you much more efficient than you are currently if you are interested in exploring this device then all the links are in the description and you can also see the devices which I am using currently and again the link is in the description for the same so are you using the same set of devices and if not if you are planning then let me know in the comments area I would really love to know what's your take on this and don't forget to share this video I'll see you soon with another one